Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Divider Conquer as we are starting with a new series, the overviews of version 5. In this first video we will talk about Rohan. Uh, I have set up, I have uh, noticed, I have to write down a couple of things I want to discuss and we will watch um, the units on the battlefield. So without further ado, Rohan. Um, our starting size is rather pretty big um one of the bigger factions to uh that in size of starting regions we have seven regions um from the gap of rohan towards um the border with uh, gondor um in every village, in every city, we have a couple of units, like three or sometimes four, including a general. So we don't have a very huge army, um, but all combined to that together, it should be sufficient. Except for the Hornburg, where we have a very sizable army, and maybe Eteros. Eteros has average three units. Um, Con continue to our bodyguards. We have a few custom bodyguards. Gambling, who comes with Riddermark X-Men, a really good shock infantry. We have Urkenbrand, who come with Helmingas, one our best arch unit. And we have um, Hama, who has a Madison Dolwart, one of our elite infantries. And I think that are the custom bodyguards. We have Theodred, who has the regular Rohan bodyguard. Um, cavalry unit, very powerful. We will see that in the second half of this video. Um, Rohan has a family tree, so you are not a Titanic faction. You see, we have three uh, named characters, characters in the family. Thaden, Theodred, Eomund and Irma. It means that if both Thaden and Theodred might have di might die in the same turn, um, our faction will not be destroyed, which is the case with Teutonic factions. Uh, it will just pass down to Erma and Eomund. So that's about uh, the family tree. Um, if we look towards uh, our ge geographical um, region. We are in the middle of the map, technically speaking. Um, I think somewhere here is the exact middle of the map. I'm not really sure. Um, through the north we have uh, a river. I'm not really sure what's whether it is truly a river that truly really exists in middle Earth or it's just to give the map some uh, a variety. Um, there we border with Lothlorien. We have the Anduin River over here, which separates us from the Dead Marshes and Dugaldur. We have the White Mountains to our south, uh, which separates us from the majority of Gondor. We are bordering Gondor over to the eastern side, but our most important uh, area is the western side. Uh, the Gap of Rohan and uh, Fangorn Forest. We see a new region compared to uh, version 4, Fangorn Camp, which is in hands of Isengard as we speak. Um, that makes our area a little bit harder to defend. I would advise everyone to first take out Fangorn Camp and move on to the rebel regions Rockburg and uh, Theodred Anduin because um, it makes defending against Isengard way easier if you only have to defend the full bug because uh, that is our only um, region that is really threatened by an enemy. If we then look towards expansion, 
uh, I would say we have two rebel regions, Tirith Anduin and Rockburg, which are probably just for you to grab. It barely ever happens that Lothlorien take one or both regions before you can. So you will be able to take Rockburg and Tirith Anduin first. Um, and from there on, I would I would suggest you take Fangorn Camp and make sure that Isengard only can come from uh, the Gap of Rohan, which makes defending way easier than when you also have to defend against Fangorn Forest, a uh, Fangorn Camp. Uh, then custom battle maps. We have a few. Uh, we own a few, being Adoras and the Hornburg are both custom battle, battle maps. And the closest by then is Isengard, um, which we will quite definitely gonna fight in, uh, in a regular campaign. And else we have Karas Galadon, Dol Guldur, and both Kazakh Dooms are uh, unique. From which Dulgodor is the most is the one you most likely gonna fight um, compared to the other ones. All right, then we continue to um, culture and buildings. Uh, as Rowan, you are a Nordman faction. You share this with, if I am right, uh, not the Anduin Vale. May oh, maybe. I think, yes, you shared with the Anduin Vale. Uh, I think Vale, yes. So the majority of Rovanian, and maybe uh, and all Wing. So those are the these are the regions where you already have culture. Otherwise, you need to you the cultural building to change to your culture the cultural building for the Nordman faction are the standing stones we have it over here standing stones first tier gives just gives you a conversion building of one percent the second tier gives three percent and I think this is a regional one so for certain regions you get a bonus uh, conversion and Besides the conversion bill uh, bonus, we get a public um, order bonus of 5% in the first tier, 10% on the second tier, and we get some uh, morale bonus at the highest tier. Um, continuing to uh, the diploma and uh, diploma diplomat. Our diplomat is trained in Edward's, uh in the build in the Golden Hall of Metaselt. Every faction has one unique building that trains the diplomats. The closest by is the Tower of Orthanc in Isengard. To the north we have uh, Karas Galadon, and we have Dugulduam. So those are the closest by. Uh, cities where you can recruit a diplomat. Uh, besides that, we are a Nordman uh, faction. We are not restricted in towns nor fortresses, so we can go all the way up to the fortress or the large town. Uh, large town and the fortress or the stronghold, it's called. Um, on guilds, we have through two guilds we have the Paul Turner's guild which is in fact a warrior's guild every faction gets the warrior's guild it gives an uh, first tier gives an upgrade on melee weapon bonus and the second tier a bonus of morale we also get the horse breeders guild first tier it doesn't give anything apparently it does a speed up replenishment of cavalry the second tier, tier give Aerith Lancers. Uh, do remember, every faction can only build one 
building of the second tier uh, guild. And the third tier guild is only available one in the whole world. For our for us it's not the Yule Stables, which give us Arid uh, Lances and Royal Guard. Um, I think there are only three factions that can get the highest tier, maybe. I'm pretty sure Dol Emerald can, and maybe Khan. Uh, Khan can, but I'm not really sure about the last one. I am sure that Dol Emerald can get this. Uh, get the highest tier, and I think Khan can also get this one. So from all guilds, the Horse Breeders Guild is the mo is one of the few that you most likely can get. It's not a guarantee; it's more likely. Um. Then we continue to ships and um, ports. We can get. Two tiers of sh uh, pause. Uh, do remind we, because we are in here, we can't get any ships because we don't have any water. Um, but uh, as Norman, we only get one tier of ships. The long ship, I think it's called, and it's a, um, it's pretty much the worst ship in the whole game. So. We are not a seafaring nation, our ships are pretty rubbish. So if we have some ships, it are the long ships and they are the worst of all. If we continue to Smiths, this is also a change from version 4.5 or 4. Um, the Smiths have, have been uh, changed that the advanced blacksmith has been removed and every faction now has a certain amount of tiers, tiers of smiths they can build. For us as a human non-Numenorian faction we can build three um, kind of three tiers of, of smiths, the leather thinner, the leather worker and the blacksmith which gives us um, at the highest tier the chain mail. It also gives us a flat income. And um, but this um, that this is something new. Um, the smithing has been um, nerfed a little bit. Uh, also new is the barrack system. As people might have known who have played earlier versions. You had to wait till the 60th term before you can train your elite troops because of something that was called the barracks event. The barracks event have been removed. So you don't need to wait any longer until you can train your top tier troops. Now you need certain requirements before you can train the barracks that gives you your top tier troops. In case of us, our guard barracks requires... Uh, the Great Hall, so that is in the City Hall building, yes. It's the second tier of the City Hall building. I always call it Town Hall line. But we need the second tier of this building before we can build our higher tier barracks, which instantly gave us all our troops. There are some uh, text that is not really supposed to be here I think um, but you see we can train all up to the uh, Riddermark X-Men which is our some of our higher higher tier units and uh, same for the archery but we only have the practice range and same for the horsemen uh, for the stables so first stables don't have any requirements. The Marshal Stables requires the Lord's Halls, and the Meares Stables requires the Royal Hall, which means that uh, this is for the second tier and this is for the highest tier. And also here we get all units. So that is a change compared to uh, last to 
the other two earlier versions. I think there is something that isn't quite correct yet. Because I still have Florence. I think this that this is something uh, that might that I might have so done something wrong with the installment, but that is some that is for me to figure out. Um, as I already as I already said, we are not restricted in uh, castles or cities, so we can build up to the highest tier of them. We don't need to unlock them, unlike some other factions who do need to unlock them. So we are it's all for free for us. Um, then we continue to scripts. Um, Rohan has two s rather small scripts. The first one is the Thaden Deceived script, uh, which basically um, means that as for 10 turns, Thaden is basically quite useless. It has a debuff um, of movement speed, so you can basically move one tile every turn. And that is because of the bonus the roads gave, because um, it was meant to not, it was meant to be that Taden couldn't move at all from others, and that and that should uh, visualize its deceive, meant uh, deceiving by Grim and Worm Thong. Um, after ten turns, it will disappear, and Taden will be. Uh, free from all debuffs. It is more than the movement uh, debuff. If you see, also troop morale, command, personal security, trade, tax income, public happiness. Everything, a lot of things are debuffed. Some things are, if I remember well, faction wide. So the whole faction suffer because of it. Um. But it's not game breaking. You will come over it, and it will. You will be fine. Um, besides, besides this, besides the Tadian script, there is a small little script uh, in the Hornburg, which allows you to build uh, glittering caves. You will get. You will get a message uh, that uh, dwarves want to set up a dwarven colony in the Hornburg, and you can either allow them or disallow. Them. Or not allow them. Um, for it, you need to be allied either to uh, Erluin or Erebor, and you must not at war, must not be at war with either of them. So, allied to one of them, not at war to either of them. Um, it will give you uh, when the glittering caves are completed, and you have the dwarven colony. It will give you access to a dwarven unit. Only trainable in the Hornburg. Um, and that is something I want to um, say to all you all as well. The Hornburg is the most important city for all of Rohan, together with Adoras. Um, the, Hornburg, the Hornburg gives you access to use best archer. It gives you access to the Dwarven unit, so try to hold the Hornburg. Um, that being said, I think we are finished. No, no, no. I almost for forgot the diplomacy. Uh, you are allied to uh, Gondor and Dol Amroth. We are good friends with uh, the Gondorians. And uh, we stand by the side for hundreds of years. And so, we'll, so we will... Into the coming wars, we're also allied to Lord Lorien to our north, so there's there's basically not a threat from any side except from 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 the side of Isengard. But do note, we are not at war yet with Isengard. War is inevitable, but we are still at the at the stage where. Uh, all the good faction things that Saruman is still on our side. So we're not at war with them yet. We are at war with Dunland, but we do not border them. So I, do n I don't expect any uh, threats from them in the early game. Unless you, rushed, uh, you rush Isengard and 
you will border them. As soon as you bo start bordering an enemy, they will start attacking you. Alright, that is all I have to say about the campaign map. And uh, let's go to the battle map. Alright, a quick overview of our roster sh shows that we have re that we really lacking in the arch department and that we have a really strong cavalry department and a decent infantry department. So, without further ado, let's just dive in at our first unit, who which is as uh, one of the few faction we really have a trash unit, the Peasant Militia. Attack 2, Defense 5 and a charge of 4. Poor morale, poor morale response. Um, these guys are just garbage. They're just there trying not to die too quickly. Um, they, come, they can form a shield from and they have a bonus against cavalry so that is nice for them. But that is mainly because they are a spear unit. Um, these guys will run as soon as the real fight starts. So don't rely on them to hold the line or to uh, bring you victory. These guys are just here, just trying to live long enough that others can do the killing and they won't die all of, all of them. They are supported by a cavalry unit, because we are Rohan. The, the peasant scouts attack 3, defense 3 and a charge of 7. Although the charge is decent, uh, pretty good actually for a uh, cavalry, for a horse unit, um, the rest is just garbage. An attack of 3 is garbage, a defense of 3 on a horse, from which 2 our defense skill is just Terrible. It is abysmal. They will die as soon as they hit the enemy lines. Don't keep them in prolonged melee. They will just be butchered. These guys are actually only good for uh, chasing routing units. And um, yeah, basically that's their only purpose. Or uh, charging into units who are... On the brink of breaking and just need a little edge to break um, the peasant scouts will be able to do that. Uh, they are cheap um, the recruitment cost is 430 that means that their um, upkeep will be around I think one third of the recruitment cost which is around 100 gold coins turn I think at most um, so, cheap, but they won't win your battles. We can, Let's go to the m Militia Theorem, which is well, basically the second theorem. Uh, there we will find the Yorling Spearmen. They are a direct upgrade of the Peasant Militia. With a 3 attack, a 12 at, uh, defense and a 4 charge. These guys will hold the line. They will fight for. Uh, to, they will fight to give you time to maneuver other units. They will give you. They will hold the line against the enemy. Uh, they have an average morale, an average morale response. They can make a shield wall. They also have a bonus against cavalry, and uh, they are they are your basic unit to hold against Isengard. Uh, morale means how quickly they will break, the morale response means how well they deal with shocks, for example if the enemy dies, if uh, if your general dies, if the enemy takes the walls, that kind of things that is the morale response. The higher that is the less likely they are they will break from morale shocks. They are supported by a more offensive uh, variant of them. The Yorling X-Men. Attack of 5, defense of 8, charge of 4, but they are armor piercing. So they will be doing and uh, they will deal better with armored units. Again, average morale, average morale response, 100% uh, movement speed. 
These infantrymen likes to fight in the forest and the snow, but don't like the barren lands. Um, I didn't touch upon it in uh, the campaign map, but every region has a green book. Um, it's listed in the building in the buildings list um, in every city, and if you can, if you right click on it, you see what uh, terrain every region is. So look it up. I will try to um, mention it again in the next um, video just to show guys where you can find it. So we don't like the barren and we do like the snow in the forest. Uh, snow also means the winter time. So every year, uh, every turn we have winter, we have a small bonus fighting. And if we don't. If we then look to the left, we have our first archer, the Yorling Archer. Uh, ma attack 5, defense 7, missile attack of 3 and a charge of 2. We have 80 missiles, 150 meters on the range and a low accuracy. Which means, which put them in, well, basically the third they are, a militia archer for a human faction. Humans are not known to be great archers. We do have a certain skill at archery. We are better than goblins. Uh, and definitely better than dwarves. But we are not as good as uh, the elves or the Numenorians, for example. So we are up there, but not really there. But not really there. Uh, 150 is a little bit low on the range if I think I think most militia units are on 160 so slightly higher uh, but these are our these are the archers that will make up the majority of our armies and that is because our other archer unit the Helmingos is not widely available but I will come to them soon. Then we go to our cavalry and we start with our first proper cavalry, uh, melee cavalry unit, the Rohirrim. With an attack of 5, a defense of 10 and a charge of 10 as well. Makes him a really good shock infant, a really sh good shock cavalry. Especially in the, early, uh, in the early stage of the game, really powerful. Um... Average morale, average morale spawns. We are still at the horses that are slightly faster than normal horses with 120 speed. The secondary attack is 4 and it works this way. Uh, the first and uh, the normal attack applies at the moment you charge and init or initially attack. In this case a spear. The secondary attack is for prolonged melee and that could be a sword for example or axes. I think these guys use uh, battle axe like the Yorling, uh, like, like the Yorling X-Men. So their secondary attack is slightly lower than their primary attack. So don't keep them in prolonged melee because they will die. They are supported by two missile units. The first are the Rohirrim Archers. With an attack of 4, a defense of 7 and a melee uh, and a missile attack of 4 as well. They have less range than the Yorling Archers. That is because they are on a horse and they cannot wield the same bows as foot archers can. So 120 on the range, more missiles with 32 missiles and a better accuracy with Average. Average morale, average morale response. We are um, we are human, so we don't fight till the death, but we don't run away at the first sight of the enemy. Together with the Rohirrim Arch with the Erat Skirmishers, they are a javelin throwing unit with 6 melee attack, 12 melee defense, and an 8 missile attack and a 9 charge bonus. So even when they are finished with their javelins, they are decent me uh, melee cavalry. They are on the same range as uh, the Rohirrim, 
only less charge and a little bit better defense. Yes, a little bit better defense. They have a bonus fighting against cavalry. They have their javelins are effective against armor. They have five of them and a range of 65 meters. The javelins also have a bonus against camels, walks, horses and elephants. And uh, like all horses, they do like to fight at the grass land, but don't like to fight a barren forest and snow. I think uh, the barren and the forest, uh, the barren and the snow are uh, more faction related, and the forest is horse related. Horses don't like to fight at the forest. Going to the next tier, which should be our mainstream. Our, uh, our mainstream units. Um, this should make up the majority of your uh, field unit of your field armies. We have first again the Eret Footman, a direct upgrade from the Yorling Spearman, with a five attack, a seventeen defense, and a five charge bonus. Uh, they can make shield wall bonus against fighting against cavalry. And we have the first unit who have good morale, good morale response. And they have bonus against camels, walks, horses and elephants. And they like fighting in the forest, in the snow, but don't like the baron. And spears normally perform a little bit worse on the attack than spear and then swords and other weapons. And that is a hard coded debuff for the spears in medieval 2 I think. Uh, but normally they perform a little bit worse than other weapons. So for that, therefore, we have another unit who are more offensive minded. The Eret Swordsman. With an attack of 9, a defense of 15 and a charge of 5. They are the ones who will charge on the flanks of the units that are fighting against the Spearmen. Uh, they can also make a shield wall. Good morale, good morale response. No speed bonuses. Also like fighting in the forest and snow and don't like the Baron. Just a regular sword and board unit. Then we go to the last of our archer units. The Helmingus. They have a melee attack of 8 and a, and a defense of 14. Missile attack of 5 and a charge of 5. So if these guys are done fight, if they are done using their bows, they are a decent fighting unit. Uh, they have uh, 24 missiles, 170 meters on the range, and an average accuracy, which makes them not very great uh, mainstream archers. They are just below average, which again points out we are not an archer-focused faction. So we don't need, we don't, we shouldn't uh, be relying on our archers. Um, these guys are also restricted by that they are only trainable in Helm's Deep. So um, we won't see a lot of them. Uh, which brings us to the conclusion that our Erling archers will be the bulk of the archers we will have in. But the Helmingals are there. If you can train them, always train them over the Erling archers. Continuing to our mainstream cavalry, we start with the Eret Lancers. They are a direct upgrade from the Rohirrim. With a 7 attack, an 18 defense and a 12 charge. Makes them a really good shock cavalry. They will deal damage to every infantry unit they charge into. They have a good morale, a good morale response. They are slightly faster than most cavalry with 150% cavalry uh, movement speed. The secondary again is a little bit lower than the primary uh, weapon. So don't keep them in prolonged melee. They are supported by the Shield Maidens of Rohan who are a tribute to Eowyn of course and they are very powerful. They also have female voice line if I remember well. And now they won't say anything. Alright. They have female voice lines. Um, 
because they are an, they're supposed to be an all-female unit. They have an attack of 10, a defense of 17, and a missile attack of 12, which are javelins. So they are also armor-piercing. They inspire nearby troops. They have a bonus fighting against other cavalry. Uh, they have 6 missiles, 70 meters on the range, and a high accuracy. So a really good unit to have in your armies and train them as much as possible. But they are more rarely um, than the other units. I don't think they are restricted. No, they are not restricted. And uh, So train them as much as you can. And last uh, on this tier who are restricted, uh, the Riders of the Fold. Another horse archer unit, melee attack of 8 and defense of 19, which is incredible high. Um, 6 missile attack, 34 missiles, 130 meters on the range and a high accuracy. Really good uh, horse archer unit and a direct upgrade from the Rohiric Ar archers. They are restricted though to two provinces, the east or the west fold. So they're not widely available, um, but if you can train them, train them always over the Rohirric Archers because they are worth the money. Their upkeep cost will be around 400, I think. So they are quite expensive. Then to our elite tier units, we have we start with the infantry and we start with I think the most widely available one. And those are the Riddermark X-Men. Attack of 7, defense of 14 and a charge of 7 as well. Which is armor. Um, armor piercing. Good morale, good morale response. No speed bonuses. They do like the forest and the snow. And they don't like the Baron. And they have for some reason a bonus against elephants. They are restricted though to a native province that... Is all your starting regions. Maybe Rockbuck and Third Undwin, but I don't think so. I'm n I don't think you can train them there. Although you might be. Um they are supported by the Manasalt Dorwars, who are also a restricted unit. And uh, this is the more defensive unit. They are uh well, they are the guardians of the Manus of the Golden Hall of Manuselt. With an attack of 8, a defense of 28, and a charge bonus of 6. Can, can make a shield wall, bonus against uh, fighting against cavalry. Good, uh, very good morale, good morale response, no bonuses uh, for speed. But they do like fighting in the forest and the snow and don't like the Baron. And of course, like all spears, a bonus against camels, walks, horses and elephants. But they only come from Adoras, so very restricted. And the last unit of infantry are the Guards of the Cave. A Dwarven unit, and therefore having some Dwarven uh, stats. As you may expect. Melody attack of 10, missiles of 11, which is armor piercing, they throw axes. Uh, they have two of them with 50 meter range and accuracy of high, a very high accuracy. But where they really show is their defense of 25. These guys will be able to hold the line. They will be, uh, although you won't have much of them, because they can only they only come from the Hornburg, as said, and after you have built the glittering caves. So not very available, and um, they're just a nice addition to your army, a gift as uh, as for building the glittering caves. Then we have two cavalry units left. First, the royal guard. These, um, the elite of the elite, the best cavalry Rohan can field. With an attack of 8, a charge of 15. A charge of 15, that is one of the highest charges in the game. 
and a total defense of 28. These guys will shred to everything you the enemy throws at you. Uh, very good morale. Good morale spawns. They inspire nearby troops and um, very good stamina. That means that they won't fire that easily. The secondary attack is just one lower than the primary attack with 9. And they have a bonus against horses as well. Then we go to the supporting cavalry unit of the Riddermark X-Men. With an attack of 8, a charge of 8 as well and a defense of 20. But do note it is all in. The half of it is in armor and the other is in armor. In defense skill. And just to, um, to explain that armor is always applying to every f battle, to every moment in the battlefield um, that a unit is attacked. Defense skill is only applied when it's attacked in melee and shield when it's attacked from the side of the shield by both missile and melee. Um, so very good defense, very good defense, but half of it is useless against archers, which makes them more vulnerable to them because the horses are bigger, so they are easier to hit. Um, so be careful fighting against archers with basically every cavalry. Uh, they wield double-handed great axes, which are armor piercing, they have good morale, good morale response and they are slightly faster than other horses. They do like fighting on the grass and in the winter or the snow and they don't like the barrens but they don't uh, dislike the forest unlike most horses apparently. Uh, they have a bonus against fighting against horses and against elephants. And on at last we have our general, uh, our general's unit, the Rohan bodyguard, nine attacks, so slightly less than uh, the royal guard, a charge of fifteen, and a total defense of twenty-eight, which is the same as the royal guard. Uh, they don't have a lower secondary weapon, and they are slightly faster than the royal guard, but uh, and they don't in, uh, inspire nearby units. But besides that, they are. A smaller version of the Royal Guard. Do note our uh, morale is not locked so we will be able to run away when uh, the general when the battle might uh, seems to be lost so we don't fight to the death. We can save our generals when it's necessary. Um, and that is the roster of Rohan. This is the first overview of version 5. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If so, please leave a like uh, or comment. Let me know what I could do better next time. And uh, if, uh, if you people liked it, I will continue this series with every faction. Um, and the next one we will be able to see soon. Because they are today's enemies. Please uh, put your bets. Uh, I will hover around to make any, uh, to give you some hints. And um, we out see you in uh, another video. But for now, first hand it over to the computer. He will reform. Can quickly reform. Good. And I will hover around the enemy. There they are. Well, there is a huge giveaway right in the center. And if you look well, you already know which faction next week will appear. I see a lot of red, uh, a lot of red and gray. Not too, not too big units. I see 
Uh, yes, and I see there the very well-known mortar shots of the dwarves. Combined with reds, we are having the dwarves of Erebor. With their dwarven catapult. And I did saw the king's actions. Do I have more? Stiff bit archers, iron fist hammers. A lot of uh, special dwarves. We have more iron, iron fist hammers. I do see some dragon slayers in here. Very nice. Um, so that is for next week. While well, our units are taking some beating by the siege equipment. Don't seem to really do very well. I have some Blacklock Engineers, uh, very nice. Do I see some... Oh, over here, do we have more King's Axes? Yeah. I'd hope... Oh, over here, X Guard of Erebor, a really nice unit. Alright, that is... That's what is it for me for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If so, please leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you soon in another video of Divide and Conquer. But until then, goodbye.